So, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> it's, uh, it's been quite a while, hasn't it? In fact, it's been a little over three months since I uploaded anything related to this series. I have a bit- now, I, I have a good explanation. Pitchforks down, please, please. A lot's happened. The Christmas rush, New Year's, going to visit in-laws, um, a controversy that I don't really want to get into. I'm also pursuing a master's degree in pastoral ministry, so, yeah, all of that stuff has really gotten in the way, which isn't, isn't really a problem that I have, it's just, you know, it's just, you know, if I want to keep push, pumping these things out at the consistent pace, with the lack there, the non-consistent pace that I've been doing, you know, I, I don't know, I'm just sorry. And at the time of this video, we're actually about halfway through the semester. Oh no. I just realized. That makes this video dated already. Uh... Yugi and Atem feel each other out for a bit, attacking and countering each other pretty much blow for blow. It's kind of impressive how Yugi is able to hold his own, especially against Atem himself. Forgive me if I go on this mini tangent, but I just absolutely adore the look of this place. Now, it's not as glamorous as the dual domes in GX or even the stadium in 5Ds will be, but it's a great template. The temple feel to it really hits me in some way, I don't really know why. The duels up to this point have been pretty varied in terms of locales, and this tomb setting just adds to the variety. Up until this point, Yugi has been relying solely on Atem. They even created a deck together that they could use, which is what they duel with pretty much for the entirety of the series. But, as Atem states, We never had those cards in our deck before. I wonder what other surprises Yugi has in store. So, Yugi has a whole new bag of tricks, and it's quickly put to the test in the coolest way possible after a few more turns. They continue going back and forth until Atem, via magic card, summons Ovelisk the Tormentor, effectively ensuring his victory. However, Yugi's determination shocks Atem. When Ovelisk is summoned, Yugi is shown kind of on his knees, but later he stands back up again. The group surmises what it means, and it's actually symbolic of something the entire series has been echoing. Why the smile? He's having the time of his life. Think about it, Taya. This is Yugi's shot to finally prove himself. He usually takes a back seat during duels. But this time, Yugi's in control of his own deck. So now, instead of standing behind the Pharaoh, the two of them are standing face to face for one last duel. Yeah, but can Yugi win? It's gonna be tough. But if anyone can do it, Yugi can. Ah, oh, I love that symbolism. Anyway, back to the duel! Obelisk attacks, only for Yugi to counter with the trap. This has brought up some hatred from the fandom, since the god cards are supposed to be immune to the effects of traps. I mean, Atem says as much here. Traps don't work on Obelisk! But, Yugi counters with the bit that upsets the fandom so much. I'm not using it on him! I'm using it on the fields under him! There are so many reasons why this shouldn't make sense, but I don't really care considering the fact that this is an anime series about a real-life trading card game. And as such, the series doesn't really have to obey everything in the card game to a T. I mean, let's face it. If it did follow the card game to a T, so many storylines would be completely ruined, such as waking the dragons with the seal of Orichalcos, Joey's duel with Merrick in Battle City with Lava Golem, Joey's loss to Merrick, and so on and so on. Via Trap Card, Attempt manages to summon three new monsters, and almost simultaneously summons both Sly Through the Sky Dragon and the Winged Dragon of Ra, thus not only summoning all three Egyptian god cards in one move, but also, once again, effectively sealing Yugi's fate. If I may, what a cliffhanger! In terms of excitement, you can't really best that, at least not by this series' standards. 
In fact, when it tempts them and draw, we actually get to hear a Tem's version of the ancient chant, which isn't exactly the same one that Yami Merrick used. In fact, let's look at them both, beginning with the Thames. Almighty protector of the sun and the sky, I beg of thee, please heed my cry. Transform thyself from orb of light and bring me victory in this fight. I beseech thee, grace our humble game, but first I shall call out thy name, Wing Dragon of the now let's go to Yami Merrick's version, and you'll see the difference. Beast of the sky, please hear my cry. Transform myself from orb of light and bring me victory in hey, this check fight. It out. Envelop the desert with your glow and cast your rage upon my foe. Unlock your powers from deep within so that together we may win. Appear in this shadow game as I call your name, Wing the Dragon of Rome! Don't see it? Please allow me to explain. When a Tem says the chant, it goes as follows. Almighty protector of the sun and sky, I beg of thee, please heed my cry. Transform thyself from orb of light and bring me victory in this fight. I beseech thee, grace our humble game. But first I shall call out thy name, winged dragon of Ra. Whereas when Yami Merrick utters it, it's like this. Great beast of the sky, please hear my cry. Transform thyself from orb of light and bring me victory in this fight. Envelop the desert with your glow and cast your rage upon my foe. Unlock your powers from deep within so that together we may win. Appear in this shadow game as I call out your name. Winged Dragon of Ra. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, while this annoys some people, I believe the only reason why the two versions aren't the same is to represent who's wielding the dragon at their respective times. Not only that, but a couple of words used in the chants themselves evoke the atmosphere for their respective uses. In a Tem's chant, he says, Grace our humble game. A Tem simply wants the dragon to descend upon this graceful game of theirs. Let me explain. The ceremonial battle stakes really aren't that high. I mean, sure, Attempt's fate is at stake. But again, it's not the entire planet, like it was when Yami Merrick used the dragon. In Yami Merrick's chant, he states, And cast your rage upon my foe, and appear in this shadow game. Both those lines call back to the atmosphere of their respective situations. In Atem's case, he simply wants the dragon to gracefully come and end the battle, but he doesn't mean to inflict any real damage or even flat out kill Yugi. Whereas, when Yami Merrick used it, he wanted to kill everyone present, and I do mean everyone. But I digress. After summoning all three monsters, Atem states that the true test will now begin. So, as if Yugi doesn't have enough to worry about with facing, you know, the literal king of games himself, he now has to take all three of the most powerful cards in the game down while contending with the Thames Onslaught. No pressure or anything, you'll be fine. In a Thames I find a Thames line about the true test very revealing about the nature of the god cards. Merrick's going to go further into it, but... If you thought one was bad, as we saw in Joey's duel with Yami Merrick, or even two, like we saw with Atem vs. Seto, just imagine how devastating all three can be at once. As Merrick describes, Well, individually they have drawbacks, but when all three are together, they're practically indestructible. Oh, and on top of that, Ashizu states that if Yugi loses, Atem's spirit will be trapped for another 5,000 years. Jeez! Thanks for even more pressure, Ashizu. Stay the course. In fact, Seto says something that's quite ironic if we take the Dark Sides of the Me of Dimensions movie into account. Hey, Pharaoh. If you end up having to stick around for a few more years, there is a bright side. The two of us can finally have that rematch. And by the looks of this duel, you're not going anywhere. I'll get more into that when I review DSOD in full. Yugi makes a bold statement, which makes Atem reconsider his choice to leave. Or, uh, Seto, my bad. But you'd love the chance to watch me lose, right? Wrong. 
I only want to see you get crushed if I'm doing the crushing. You owe it to the Pharaoh to stay! Please take this. My king. It is you who is now king. You have a bond that goes back thousands of years! And you should be here to say goodbye to him when he loses! What? You can't be serious! More serious than I've ever been in my life! Those Egyptian gods may be strong, but they're not undefeatable! And I'm gonna take them down one by one! You're nuts! Wow. Cool. Now, if you don't mind, I have myself a duel to win! This is where Yugi truly comes into his own. See, when he dueled against Yami Bakura and won, he proved that he was ready to be on his own. But now, he has to prove it to a Tam himself, who's been with him since the beginning of the series. That is a major, major thing to accomplish, which literally all of us have had to do at some point. In fact, Yugi elaborates on this point. Ever since our spirits joined together, I've always let the Pharaoh take the lead during our duels. But every obstacle we faced together pushed me to try harder. And I always knew that someday I'd be good enough to walk by his side. I just hope that day's today. Atem also gives Yugi some advice, as well as some sagely wisdom, not to mention some major insight into his own character development, which is so satisfying. This is what I'm afraid of. See, the bots on YouTube are probably going to detect this from a mile away, but I'll try to condense it as much as I can, while still getting the point across. However, if you want to see it in full, simply go watch episode 222 of the original Duel Monsters. But, anyway, here we go. Yugi, I can see the uncertainty in your eyes, and if you expect to win this duel, you must first overcome your self-doubt. I believe that's why fate brought us together, so that you could learn to trust in yourself and be the duelist that you truly are inside. And so that I could learn from you. I wouldn't be who I am without you. And I thought about everything that you taught me when I was building my deck. That's exactly what I did when I built mine! You taught me about bravery, and about having self-confidence even when all hope seems lost. And I thought about that with every card that I picked. And you taught me about friendship and having compassion for others. In Duelist Kingdom, you showed me that there are some things more important than winning, like the safety of a friend. Each of us has given the other a gift. Ah, oh, the feels! That's so great to see. Anyway, Atem destroys both of Yugi's monsters, with both returning to the field instantly, courtesy of Mirage Ruler, which essentially resets the field as well as restores Yugi's lost life points at the cost of 1000. Either way, great play. Also, I'd hate to keep dumping on Dylan's timeline theory, which I actually think is really impressive, but, well, Ashizu, take it away. <laughs> I feel as if Yugi is going to turn things around in his next move. Huh? Have you seen the future? I haven't had a vision of the future in years. Let's just call this a strong hunch. This next part is just gonna be is just gonna be me gushing about how epic this comeback is. So I may save it for next time, depending on how long it turns out. But in case it did make it into this one, here we go. Yugi basically breaks up his magnet warrior into the into the three monsters that formed it. But in doing so, he activates Life Through the Sky Dragon's special ability, its second mouth, which forces it to attack any new monster that the opponent plays. Yuki, however, activates Magnum Force, which repels the dragon's special ability right back at him, weakening the god cards significantly. He then goes into attack, only for attempt to activate Mirror Force, destroying Yugi's monsters instead. Yugi then activates Magnet Reverse, allowing him to summon Valkyrian back from the graveyard. But once again, Slifer's effect activates, only for, Yugi, only for Yugi's trap to counter it, only this time, Obelisk actually goes down for the count. Yugi then separates Valkyrian once again, repeating the process once again. Only, both Slifer and Ra are destroyed. Well, that didn't take very long now, did it? So yeah, Yugi is the true king of games.
But it's not because of how good at the game he is, but because he managed to do the impossible. Defeat all three Egyptian gods in the same turn. Unless you count Pyramid of Light with Seto doing it, but I'm not since that movie isn't considered canon. This whole, this whole plot summary has gotten me has gotten me thinking about something Seto related. His character, his character development. Let's take a look at that. 